Hello and welcome to our virtual lunch and learn. Today we're talking about safety categories. My name is Rachel Green and I'm the digital communications specialist here at McNaughton McKay Electric Company. Presenting for us today will be Kevin McDonald, industrial control product manager out of our Greenville, South Carolina location. We'll be getting started shortly. We'd like to allow a few minutes for our attendees to join us here today. As you come in, let us know where you're joining from in the comments section. I see we have a number of viewers with us already. Welcome everyone. You can view recordings of previous virtual lunch and learns on our YouTube channel under the virtual lunch and learn playlist. And we cover a new topic every Wednesday at noon. So be sure to join us in the future as well. If you're just coming in, welcome. We're, we're talking about safety categories today with industrial control product manager, Kevin McDonald. As always, you're welcome to ask questions as we go along in the comment section. Kevin will address those during the Q&A at the end of his presentation. We're doing things a little differently today. Towards the end of the presentation, we're gonna have a game show portion where Kevin will put some diagrams up on the screen and ask you some questions. To participate, you'll simply enter your responses in the comment section, and I'll be reading those out to Kevin. Um, the only prize we will have for you today is the international recognition you'll get here on our live stream, but we look forward to engaging with you and interacting. If you'd like to reach out afterward or if you have further questions for Kevin after this presentation, you can always send us an email at macamaclive at mc-mc.com. Be sure to let us know which session you attended and we'll direct your questions to Kevin. All right, Kevin, we have a number of viewers with us now, so I'll pass it over to you. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending the Lunch and Learn today. Um, I'm Kevin McDonald, Industrial Control Sensors and Safety Product Manager for McDonald McKay in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, today, we're going to discuss safety categories. And some of you first thought might be, well, we don't use safety categories anymore. EN 954 has been obsolete since 2012. But the fact is um, safety categories are still a major part of the uh, ISO 13849 uh, safety standard. Um, essentially what ISO uh, 13849 did was take um, EN 954 uh, and elaborate on it to make sure there was reliability by calculating a mean time to fail dangerously and diagnostic coverage to give you a performance level. So they're still very valid today. Uh, one thing, oh, another thing is probably the most asked question and that I get as far as safety goes is what's the difference between category three and category four? And so in this presentation, I'm gonna try to draw direct lines so you can definitely see the difference between category three and category four. One thing I would like to do is shamelessly promote Rockwell Safe Book 5. Um, this is put out by Rockwell, it's free. It's not a promo or an advertisement for Rockwell products. Uh, this has a lot of good information and this has got the foundation of all the information that I've used today. Um, it's a short read, and I guarantee you, if you do read it, you will be close to an expert on machine safety. So um, with that, today's video is going to be different. Normally, this is a very interactive, high energy uh, presentation, and I hope you're on caffeine because I am. Um, so the issue is with this being a video, we do have a 15 second delay. So I can't ask questions and wait for uh, answers from the audience, but we're going to attempt to do that today. At the end, we'll have a game show and we do want you to respond, whether you're uh, guests or Mac, uh, Mac and Mac employees, please participate. It'll make the presentation fun and go faster. So with that today, what we'll be doing is we'll be defined in the safety category. And by doing this, we're going to first start out with the terminology as is stated. Then we're gonna elaborate and give you meanings of the uh, terminology. Then I'll show an example of the safety schematic for that category. And then at the end, what we're gonna try to do is use one word 
to define that safety category. And this will help us to remember exactly what is important about this safety category. Then we're gonna define five safety faults and demonstrate how they interact with the safety circuit to more elaborate and understand how the safety circuits work. Then we'll have our game show. All right, with that, are you all ready? Here we go. All right, so the first category is safety category B. It says machine control systems shall be designed, constructed, selected, assembled, and combined in accordance with relevant standards. So what that means is really category B is not a safety category. It's um, best engineering practices where we're going to follow uh, standards and codes such as NEC or NFPA. So um, what this does do is understand that the safety categories, when I say safety category four, that includes everything in safety category three, in two, in one, and in B. So B becomes our foundation for good practices. Some of the things that you need to consider um, is uh, you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Uh, you must size your components to the correct voltage and current. You must uh, have it designed to withstand this environment. Use the de-energization, de easy for me to say, principle. Um, fail safe mode. Uh, transient protection so that we don't uh, get spikes when the coil of a contactor uh, de-energizes. Um, overload protection. And that's your size of wiring do the proper grounding for your safety system. All right, so here's an example that we're going to look at. And when I say SCP, that's short circuit protection. OP is overload protection. And TS, that's transient protection. So that's a zener in parallel with the coil. All right. So if I want to come up with one word to describe category B, what word that would that be? And I chose standard. All right, best practices would be another good thing uh, up to code, um, but that's category B. All right. All right, category one. Category one is defined as um, well tried safety components and safety principles. And what that means is well tried safety components equals safety rated components. All right. Do not use non-safety components in a safety circuit. A scenario that I've seen is uh, we had a guard, a slot in the guard. Uh, it was the end feed for product into the machine. And there was a photo eye uh, present, non-safety rated photo eye. If the operator uh, or OSHA asks the operator what that uh, photo eye is for, if the operator says, that's to detect material on the end feed, everything's fine. If the operator says, well, that's to detect the hand and stop the machine, you're going to get busted. So it's key that every safety circuit has safety rated devices. And here's an example of our safety circuit. And what we'll point out here is this symbol right here. This is force guided. And notice that the cam here actually forces open the normally closed contacts, and a spring returns them. This is opposite of how most switches work. Um, the one thing with the force guided is if we do get a, a shorted contact or welded here, hopefully this force guided will open it up and spide up. All right? Um, so safety rated devices. So if I wanted to define category one in one word, what would it be? And that answer, safety. Safety rated devices in a category one circuit. All right, category two is defined as the safety function shall be checked at the machine startup and periodically by the machine control system. If a fault is detected, a safe state shall be initiated or if not possible, a warning. Now, ISO 13849 assumes that you should have 100 tests for every one uh, interaction. So what that means is if 
the guard door is open once per shift. It's got to be tested 100 times per shift. So what that means is the loss of the safety function is detected by a test, all right? The occurrence of a fault can lead to a loss of safety functions between the checking intervals. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I've never seen a Category 2 uh, safety circuit, and I don't like them. And when we get the faults, that will further hopefully elaborate um, why we don't see them and um, why I don't like them. But that's just my personal opinion. All right. So here's an example of a Category 2 circuit. And what do we see different from a Category uh, 1 circuit? Uh, this is where that interaction would be. Uh, we have a safety monitoring relay. All right, so the safety monitoring relay is constantly monitoring input. It also uses um, uh, the uh, uh, normally closed uh, contact on the relay. Now, one of the things I didn't define and on category one on the safety rating for a uh, contactor is this symbol here and these. So this safety rated contactor is mechanically linked. And how that works is if one of the contacts welds, all of them stay shut. But what is important is the normally closed contact never closes. So then when you try to use this in uh, your uh, reset circuit, you never get a reset, which gives you diagnostic coverage on your output. So. This is a way that the relay checks uh, and tests your output for um, its safety rating. So if I had to use one word to describe category two, I would use test. All right, now this is category three. And to be honest with you, I'm gonna say 90% of the safety circuits that I see out in the field are either category three or category four. So this becomes the heart of the discussion. Um, of the majority of those circuits, the majority of them are category three. So category three is defined as the system shall be designed so that a single fault in any of its parts does not lead to a loss of safety function. Where practicable, a single fault shall be detected. So what does that mean? Uh, when a single fault occurs, the safety function is always performed. But uh, not all faults will be detected, and accumulation of undetected faults can lead to a loss of safety function. And that's really critical in the definition. One single fault can't defeat your system, but accumulation, multiple faults, can lead to a loss of a safety function. So when we look at the schematic of this, what do we see different? We see redundancy. All right, so now our gate switch has two contacts. We also have two input channels. We have two output channels. We have two coils, and we have two safety contactors uh, in series with the motor. We also have two feedback devices in series. So. Now, using redundancy, and when we do the faults, you'll see it uh, very clearly, uh, we lead to no single fault shall defeat our safety circuit. So if I wanted to use a single word for category three, redundancy. And, and look, I apologize. I've kind of done a lot with the animation. Um, there's a lot of animation in this presentation. And once you go down that rabbit hole, it sucks you in. So I apologize. So um, let's go to category four. So category four states, the system shall be designed so that a single fault in any of its parts does not lead to a loss of the safety function. The single fault is detected at or before the next demand on the safety function. If this detection is not possible, an accumulation of faults shall not lead to a loss of safety function. And that's critical. All right, so what it means is when a fault occurs, the safety function is always performed. Faults will be detected in a time to prevent any loss of a safety function. And so here's our category four circuit. 
Um, what do we see different in category four than we saw in category three? The answer is I can't find any difference. When I look at the actual schematic of three and then look at the schematic of four, I can't see any difference. One is labeled three, one is labeled four. This is why there's a lot of confusion about what the difference is between category three and category four. So next, what I'm gonna do is use faults to kind of see how um, these categories interact with the faults. There's five types of faults that occur in a safety circuit. You can have an open circuit, you can have a short to zero volts, you can have a short to 24 volts. You can have a shorted contactor or in redundant circuits, you can have a short to short between the circuits. And let's see how they interact. All right, so here we have a category one circuit, all right? And if I open the circuit, do we detect it? Yes, we detect it, and we detect it immediately. And we drop out the coil, so we have no loss of a safety function. Everything works fine. How about on a short to zero volt? Well, current takes the path of least resistance, so we're gonna lose voltage on the, cor uh, the coil, we're gonna drop out the coil, we're gonna detect it immediately, and we're not gonna lose our safety function. What about a short to 24 volts? Do we detect it immediately? No. All right, how about on demand? Do we detect it? No, we do not detect it, unless you wanna say yes, we detect it, because we defeated our safety circuit. We now have a loss of safety circuit. How about on a shorted contactor? We don't detect it there. We open it, again, we have a loss of our safety circuit and we have defeated our safety circuit. And that's okay, because in category one, all we have to do is use well-tried safety components and safety principles. Let's move on to category two. So here we're gonna add a safety monitoring relay, or monitoring safety relay. Um, so in this, do we detect an open? Yes, and we detect it immediately, and we drop it out, our safety circuit works fine. Again, short to zero, same thing, detected immediately, safety circuit works fine. Now we have that short to 24 volts again, do we detect it? No. How about on demand? No, and we lost our safety function. On a shorted contactor, same scenario, we don't uh, detect it, we lost the safety function, and this is why um, I'm not big and we probably don't see category twos, but that's okay that we lost the safety function because it does say in category two that uh, the safety uh, function shall be checked at the startup of the machine and periodically by the control system. If a fault uh, shall be detected, if not possible, you have a warning. So it's critical if you are going to use a safety uh, category two that you do periodically physically check the safety circuit. Whether you have to define based on the hazard, do we do it once a shift, do we do it at the beginning shift, middle shift, end of shift, that's up for you to define for your risk. But I don't see a lot of category two. Now let's get into category three. So on a category three, we now have redundancy. And an open, do we detect it? Yes, we detect it. And what we have here is a loss of voltage on A, but we have voltage on B. This is called a mismatch state, all right? And this relay will go into a hard fault. And that's critical to understand. Um, this will not reset until one of two things happens. First, you have to remove voltage off of both legs. So no voltage is present. And then you have to reintroduce the voltages on both legs, and you have to do it within this discrepancy time, which is milliseconds. Uh, it has to see both voltages within that milliseconds of time. So um, we have the mismatch states, and we detect it, and the safety function works fine. All right, and a zero, same scenario, but now we have voltage on A, nothing on B, mismatch state, safety circuit starts, stops, we go into a a hard fault and um, we have to reset it. How about on a short to 24 volts? 
Do we detect it now? No, we do not detect it now. How about now on demand? Yes, again, we have mismatched state voltage on A, not on B, we go into the hard fault. How about a shorted contactor? We see it on demand, mismatched state. How about um, a short between the circuit? Now that we have two circuits, we can introduce the fifth fault. So now we have a short between the two circuits. Do we detect this? No. Do we detect it now? No. Have we lost the safety function? No. Everything's working fine, and we do not detect this fault. Now what happens if we get into this scenario, where we have a shorted contactor along with um, the short between two channels? Do we detect it immediately? No. How about on demand? No, we don't detect it. And we've lost the safety circuit. It's now not functionable, and that's okay. Because in category three, we state that the system shall be designed so that a single fault in any of the parts does not lead to the loss of the safety function. Where practicable, a single fault shall be detected. And an accumulation of faults, that's acceptable to lose your safety circuit in a category three safety circuit. All right, so let's look at category four. Category four is different than category three, and that now, we're going to use outputs from the safety relay as uh, to our safety e-stop and then to the inputs of our safety channels. The unique thing about this um, output from the relay is that it generates pulses. And these are microprocessor-based uh, safety relays that says, I send a pulse out on A, I need to see it back on the input A, and I need to see it in a certain amount of time. All right, same with B, send it on B, need to see it on B. Now this is critical to understand because if you're troubleshooting this circuit and you put a voltmeter DC on channel A, you're not gonna read voltage, all right? These pulses drop out very fast, but they're frequent. Um, and it's fast enough not to drop out the relay, plus it knows that it's scented, so it should see it. Um, a voltmeter on DC will not see this. If you put it on AC, you will see sometimes 13, 14 volts, which you're expecting 24 volts. But the pulses are so frequent that it's dropping you down in a voltage duty cycle. So when I do troubleshoot inputs on these types of circuits, I a lot of times power off and use resistance or continuity readings to troubleshoot my, my safety circuit and make sure that I don't have uh, an open somewhere and that I have the appropriate amount of uh, resistance. So let's examine the faults now. If I get an open, do I detect it? Yes, immediately, safety function works fine. How about a short to zero? Immediately, safety function works fine, all right? How about now? I don't detect it immediately. On demand, I detect it again, Voltage on A, not on B, mismatched state into a hard fault. It's detected, safety circuit works fine. How about a shorted contact? We detect it on demand when we have the mismatched state. Now, what about this scenario? Do we detect a short between the two channels? The answer is yes, and we detect it immediately. And the reason is, is because we sent the pulse out on one channel, but we saw it on both channels. This puts it in a hard fault uh, again, and we now detected that fault. So category four says the system shall be designed so that a single part, a fault in any of the parts does not lead to a loss of a safety function. The single fault is detected at or before the next demand on the safety function. And um, if this detection is not possible, you still cannot have an accumulation of faults lead to a safety fault function. All right, guys, it's time for that game show. I really need you to participate on this. So I will tell you, we got a 15 second delay. So what this game show entitles is name that category. So I'm gonna put a slide up and we want you to use the chat and tell me what category is this category one, two, three, or four? Um, uh, 
let's go ahead and, and look at the first slide. And what I will tell you about these circuits are they're not easy. Uh, they're supposed to be thought to be put into this. Um, and thus we'll have a game show off of it. All right. And so let's see what we got here. When I look here, we've got short circuit protection and we got transient protection. So we know that we got um, category B covered. We have safety rated inputs and safety rated outputs. Looks like we're category one. We have a safety relay. That's doing our testing. We have multiple inputs here. All right. Um, Kevin, it's like we yes. have a guess. We have a All guess right. what is category, category four. That is incorrect. Um, I'll explain that, but let's wait until we get a good, a correct guess. Okay. All right. How about, all right, so we have multiple switches here. Um, and then the one thing that I do want to point out also is where is the voltage coming from? All right. We have another guess for category three. We got two guesses for category three. Incorrect. And um, the reason I'm going to I'm going to say that is um, we have three devices here. Um, three is an odd number. Uh, so I I have trouble saying that this is a redundant um, system. So I, I just I, I've got to assume that it's um, not a redundant system. And I can't say it's category four uh, triple redundancy because look at where our voltage is coming from. Our voltage is coming from just regular source here. So we don't have any pulse testing. All right. So without pulse like test we... Oh, I'm sorry, you keep going. No, without pulse testing, we can't have category four. I was gonna say, I think we have a winner here. Benjamin LeBay has guessed category two. That is correct, Benjamin, thank you. Uh, great job. Benjamin Bay is correct. This is category two. We have um, uh, we have uh, tried and true uh, uh, engineering practices. We have safety rated devices, and we have a safety monitor relay doing our testing. So this is a category two circuit. All right, we'll go on to the next one. Next one, this has got a lot to it. Um, so so let's go ahead and look at it. Um, we have our, our protection So we've got, looks like uh, general practices. We've got safety rated devices. We've got a self-monitoring relay. We've got redundant switches, but here's the key to this one. Notice we got something unique here. We've got a normally open, whoops, normally open and a normally closed. That's different from most um, the other thing that we have is we do actually have voltage coming from the safety relay and then coming back into the safety relay. So what category do you think this one is? We've got a guess from Wayne Bizet. He says category four. Wayne is correct. Hey, great job, Wayne. Um, this is a category four. Even though it's different in the fact that we have a normally open and a normally closed, diversity is actually really good in a safety circuit. Um, if you have the same switch that was manufactured on the same day with the same material by the same company and one fails, what are the chances of the same switch next to it failing uh, in a very similar amount of time? It's a very good chance and that's called common cause failure. So diversity is actually really good in safety circuit. And this is in fact a safety category four. So this I'd like to give a point to Leslie Smith as well. He also said category four. All right, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. All right, so this is a really unique one here and I wanted to bring it up because a lot of people are now using our safe torque off. So with safe torque off, it's a pretty good idea to identify the category that it belongs to. So when I look at it, um, we do know that a drive is over uh, as over uh, load protection, but I don't see short circuit protection. But in this case, 
I'm going to assume that short circuit uh, protection exists above uh, the drive and that we do have good general practices. I also see that we have gate switches and an e-stop. Um, they don't have the symbols for safety ratings, but I do know a guard master Trojan is a safety rated switch. And so I'm going to assume that these are safety rated switches. We also see that we have two contacts and we're going to two channels. We're going to S1 and S2. So I, I think I can assume this is redundant. We also have voltage coming out of the drive going to um, the uh, uh, switch. So what safety category is this? I think you may have may have stumped him on this one, Kevin. <laughs> and that's why I brought this one up. This um this is a good question uh, we get a lot of, and so it's good to bring it out. Do I need to hum the theme for Jeopardy? Oh, we got a guess from Les Smith again. He says category three. That is correct, Les. Way to go. Thank you. This is a category three circuit. And one of the things that we need to point out is they say there is a potential that the IGBTs in the drive can all short out at once. And if that does, that's a single point of failure. With that being said, the likelihood of that ever happening is very, very small. So this becomes a category three with exception. We can make it a category four, but what we have to do is include a safety relay into the safety circuit and add a um, safety rated contactor in series with the drive and motor. And that can make it a category four. All right, good guess, Leslie, thank you. We'll give a, a point answer. to I'm not Gary say yes. Smith as well. Gary also guessed category three, so we'll give him a point too. Excellent. He's our power and motion guy. He better get that right. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. <laughs> All right, so here we have the last of the slides. So in here, we got the short circuit protection and transient. Um, so I see good safety practice or good general engineering practices. I see um, we got safety rated switches and uh, contactors. Um, I see a safety monitor and relay. I see multiple inputs with two channels. Um, our switches are in series this time, um, but we do have two channels. And I also see voltage coming out of the relay and back into the relay. So what category is this safety circuit? Well, this is another tricky one. They're all tricky. They're made to make you think. The key to this is while we have um, a redundant circuit, we have multiple switches in series. Les has been on a roll. I don't know if he has a guess for us on this one. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Nobody's going to call you out if you're wrong. All right. Les is guessing category four on this one. Less, that's incorrect. Oh, no. Good try, though, and, and a good answer, but it's incorrect. Come on, guys. That only leaves three left. You saved the toughest one for last. Yes, and this is an important one um, uh, and well worth being the final one. Oh, John Brewer is saying category three. Ding, 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 ding. Way to go, John. Thank you. Uh, you are correct, sir. So uh, let's elaborate because this is a very important. Here, we actually have a drawing of the safety circuit with um, three switches in series uh, on a pulse train. All right. So what happens if we get a short across the contact? Do we see this fault? No. How about in demand on this? Do we see it? No, it's not detected. Have we lost the safety function? No, everything's working fine. All right. So what about if we do this? So we opened it up here on demand. Do we see the, the, the fault? Yes, we got a mismatched state. See voltage on A, nothing on B. 
So we have a hard fault. So now this looks innocent enough. You should be able to detect it from this point. But has anybody ever troubleshot a series of e-stop circuits? And then when you do, what's the first thing people do? They say, we got a hard fault. And uh, what do they do? They run around and they press the first safety uh, e-stop uh, that they come to. Well, this just cleared the fault. And then when we reset it back to normal, we still have the fault and it's still not detected. This is called fault masking. And it's really important to understand in a series circuit. So now we get into this scenario here where both contacts and we've defeated the safety circuit. And in category four, an accumulation of faults is not acceptable. In category three, an accumulation of faults is acceptable all right so with that the main answer when you're de uh, uh, defining the difference between category three and category four category four one all faults will need to be detected you can't have a single fault or accumulation of faults defeat your safety circuit two Pulse testing must be used on electromechanical devices. This will allow you to detect that short between channels and not uh, derive an accumulation of faults. Three, each safety input device must have an independent in, uh, input. No daisy chaining in a category four circuit. Does that help explain the difference between category three and category four? All right. If I had to do category four in one word, what would that word be? Detection. You're going to detect each fall. All right. Any questions? We did have a question from Les. Oh, and before, before we read his question out, I wanted to give a point also to Gary Smith and Benjamin LeBay, who also called category three on that last one right after I read out John Brewer's answer. So great job, guys. Um, Good job. You're the all-stars. <laughs> Les had a question about, uh, I believe, the, the last uh, circuit you show, the Category 3. Um, what about the contactor on the tea leaves? The contactor? Oops. I believe he's referring to that diagram, but I might be wrong. Let's, uh, let's go to it. All right. The contactor. What's the question about the contactor? Um, he's just asking, what about the contactor on the T leads? I'm not understanding the T leads. Les, if you want to um, elaborate on that a little bit, I'll read it out. We have another question here from uh, Josh. He asks, can guard link work with category four? Well, yes, it is a category four rated system. That's key to understanding, and that's a whole different presentation uh, on GuardLink. But that is our newest technology, and that is a Category 4 rated circuit on a daisy chain. And the reason it is is because each device has an intelligent tap, and that tap is what separates it from being a daisy chain. Great. All right. Um, we have another question here from Jeremy. He asks, how do categories relate to both PL and SIL? So um, they're a part of it. Uh, the safety circuits are designed the same way uh, when you're defining your PL. There um, is somewhat of a corollary where you can say category four um, is a PLE or category three is a PLD. Um, but it's not always the case. There are certain scenarios that a category three with a very high diagnostic coverage can still be a PLE. But the general is category four is PLE. Uh, e. Great. And Les clarified, um, I think once you put that diagram back up, he said that he had assumed a dry app. Um, oh. so thank you for putting that back up on the screen. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So okay. any well, other questions? All good questions. Thank you. We had one other question, which was if you would be signing any autographs, but I'm afraid <laughs> that'll be difficult to do virtually. 
Oh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, we'll give just a couple more minutes here in case anyone has any follow up questions. And while we wait, I just want to remind you to subscribe to the McNaughton McKay YouTube channel for more content like this. Um, this session and many others like it will be available on the virtual lunch and learn playlist as recordings. And you can always reach out to us at the Mac and Mac live email address. That's Mac and Mac live at NC NC.com. And with that, I want to thank you, Kevin, for this really great presentation. Thank you to all of our live viewers for engaging with us today, being interactive. This is a really good presentation with some great info. And hey, thank you all and God bless. Thank you so much. Have a great day.